What's up guys, Barry Gaming here back with more Idle Heroes and today we're going to continue on our Support Hero Guide series. Uh, we've already hit Heart Watcher, we've done Cruise as well. Next, I feel like one of the other most important heroes to talk about is Amon Ra. Ever since she came out at the anniversary, she has been a meta-defining hero. Such a strong, strong support hero that you see her on just about everybody's account. Everybody has at least one Amon Ra. Some people run two. She is just that powerful. So today I kind of want to go over her skills, the way you gear and set her up. They kind of set you up and explain why she is such a strong, strong hero. So probably the most important thing to go over here is her active skill. First, let's just start with that. Deals damage uh, to the frontline enemies, which the damage really doesn't matter. Amon Ra is not there for damage. Uh, it, she does very little damage in PvE and PvP, so you don't gear her for attack. But the big thing with that frontline hit is it has a 70% chance to petrify each target for two rounds. That is huge, especially when you have uh, some of the tankier, you know, like a horse or an Asmodel or something like that in the frontline, even Ada's, just to lock them out, CC them. That already makes that a pretty good active skill in my eyes. But what it also does is it grants all your allies two layers of Guardian Shadow. So Guardian Shadow is that purple bubble you see around your tar your enemy or your allies. Um, and what it does, it negates all damage received from the next two attacks. So each layer does one, so one layer for each attack. And it turns 100% of that damage into healing for your team so even when you look at Amon Ra's healing at the end of the fight it's not really showing how much she's supporting because yes that's she shows how much healing but she's also preventing an equal amount of damage as well um so it's absolutely amazing it does not affect monster hits or passive skills or marks so things like Asmodel marks those that damage if someone crits you it still will take the damage. Um, monster hits will hit you for 100%, but it's just such an amazing negating damage tool, especially if you get to attack first and then Dark Arthendal is following up with a giant burst. That just turns it all into a heal. Same with uh, things like Aspen, although Aspen is a good example to talk about. So there are certain heroes in the game that have multiple damage numbers within their skill. We'll actually look at Aspen right here. So in his case, he has his basic, you know, deals to four random enemies, the damage here. But then they do an extra damage percentage based on uh, another number. And then they also do another extra damage. So in situations like this... This count says uh, two to three hits. So what that means is each one of those layers, these layers here, you get two layers. Aspen can take all the layers off of those four targets, like just immediately. So there's certain characters and certain heroes that do very, very good at things like this. Naki is another great one with her uh, with her basic attack. It hits the whole back line, but it can it can hit the target twice. So that's something to remember when we're talking about shadow defense. The first passive here is just her uh, stat boost, HP 20%, amazing for Amon-Ra. Attack, it's crazy to think that she has an attack passive buff that's completely useless, yet she's still such an amazing hero. Damage reduce 25%, amazing. This one's huge, rounds being controlled, minus one. So, so long as your Amon-Ra is the fastest hero on the battlefield, you don't have to worry about control immunity, anything like that. No matter what, the beginning of the next round, you will be uncc'd you will not be cc'd and you'll be able to continue fighting as normal it, it's is really really powerful especially when combined with purify you automatically get rid of your control immunity you get rid of debuffs it's very very strong the second passive is uh, a damage dealing one it's not super important but it can be helpful so whenever an ally releases a skill she will target three random, well, not even three random enemies. She'll just deal damage three times in a row to a random enemy that deals 200% of her attack. So, nothing amazing, but it's there. Eh, maybe it helps. I, It really isn't that amazing. It's very little damage since she's built with very low attack, but it is what it is. And then lastly, the last pa passive skill gives her basic attack the ability to curse enemies two times. So every time she attacks with the basic attack, 
two random enemies get tagged with one of these healing curses. Now these healing curses are the little purple mist you see above their head. We'll show you a little bit later on, but what it does is it offsets the next healing received by the target and turns it into 100% of that heal into a direct damage attack. So that is really strong. Um, it doesn't affect uh, monster healing, so you don't have to worry about that with Phoenix or Deer. But uh, anything that would normally heal it, so like an Ada, an Amon Ra is a perfect counter to an Ada, perfect counter to things like Valkyries, all sorts of stuff like that. Anybody that heals, perfect counter. So those are the skills. Hopefully, I mean, the biggest one that the, really what you're building Amon Ra for is the Shadow Defense. Those layers to mitigate damage and then also heal are so huge. And then she also petrifies, which is why we are using her on our Petrify Mean team. As far as gearing go, optimal setup is two piece of the preset and then two six star pieces in the weapon and the accessory slot. We're just all out of six star gear right now, so we're forced to use the whole set. But you definitely want to use a two piece, two piece split gear setup. The best stone for her is definitely speed HP. You want her attacking first every round, so you're building her 100% for speed. Even, even in the soul stones, I recommend doing the speed HP as well. Uh, and as far as artifacts go, not a big difference. Um, you're not there for the skill damage. All you really want in Amun-Ra is that energy. Most people build Amun-Ra for energy first round. It's pretty much the most solid setup unless you're doing something special with your team. Uh, I mean, Demon Bell would be a great one just because it gives her more health, more survivability. You can even throw Magic Source on here. That is perfectly fine. As far as enables go, uh, you want speed, so you're gonna build growth for both your E1 and E4 abilities. Enabling for shelter is usually the safest just so she takes less damage. Purify is amazing when combined with her native ability to break CC in one round. And of course, Unbending Will gives her more chances to live, get a second active off. Usually whenever an Amon Ra can get a second active off, it pretty much means you're going to have a really good chance to win the fight. So uh, definitely speed, definitely active round one are, are going to on average be the best thing that you can do for your setup she does have two different skins the first one when she first came out has control immunity hp and attack it's okay i feel like the control immunity and attack are completely wasted so if you are going to get a skin for her it's really just for the hp but the newest one they came out with is the halloween limited dread puppet this one is amazing you get speed super important HP also very important and damage reduced so oh man so if you if you get the upgraded skin you have you have 29% damage reduced not counting your aura damage reduced so that's really 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 good uh, it's a great skin to have hopefully when it comes around maybe we'll get another Halloween event where we can exchange skins down the road that would be awesome if we can get something like that again but yeah, overall, Amon Ra is probably one of the most important heroes when it comes to PvP, and she is pretty close to necessary for Broken Spaces 7. Uh, people can get away with using like a Gustin or a Bell Rain, depending on their team composition, but Amon Ra is that perfect hero for PvE as well if you have a, a, a team that doesn't heal very well. Granted, she is hard countered by passive damage, so if you're up against enemies that do a lot of passive damage, she's not very helpful. But against burst heroes, she is the best counter to that. Totally. Which is why right now we're pretty much in a heavy passive damage meta, mainly because Amon Ra is still around. So let's jump into a couple fights. I want to show a couple PvP fights so you guys can understand how the damage is working. Um Let's see, let's grab someone that's a decent power level here. Dude should be good. Let's go up against him. Uh, we have the setup we want, and let's slow it down. So right off the bat, Ada does get to attack first, so does Mem, and their Amon Ra is built for more speed as well. So these are the Guardian Shadows we're talking about. These layers absorb damage. They hard counter Penny because Penny cannot crit on a target that has that shield. So as you saw, both pennies attacked, zero crit damage, meaning they do zero damage overall. Um, 
we still have a couple Amon Ra shields still up there. They're pretty much already knocked out, so I feel like we have a pretty good advantage right now. Uh, that Amon Ra actually got a lot of energy by being in the front row. That's the one advantage of putting her in the front. If she gets hit a lot more, she will have more chances to get shields up. So, The one thing I will say, this little bit of purple you see up the top here floating around, that's Amon Ra's basic attack. She actually has a stack of it as well. Um, that's the one that converts your healing power into damage. Um, does not work on things like Unbending Will and... Or not Unbending Will, sorry. The, uh, the Guardian Shadow Shields. But uh, overall, they're... Like this right here, having Guardian Shadow. Hard counters heroes like Penny. Anybody who wants to do burst damage. Let's see who Penny hits right here. Oh, yep, she just... Look at that, all that healing we just got. That is perfect, so... Amara still has that spot on there. So does Penny. Neither of them are really going to heal. So it's it's pretty <laughs> pretty useless. And then of course Garuda cleaning up. So when I talk about the healing. It doesn't look like Amara did a ton of healing. But in reality she pretty much doubles that healing. At least because she is preventing damage as well. It's not just the amount of healing she does here. It's the damage she's preventing as well, which makes her so, so strong. Uh, one thing to note for early game, uh, one thing I always like going over is the different tiers of Amun-Ra as well. Five star, she's decent. Um, she has a much, much lower chance to petrify. And the big thing, under 10 star, so all the way up from five star to nine star, Amun-Ra only gives one layer of Guardian Shadow. Um, that's a big difference. Big, big difference. And then also, you're only gaining 50% damage to healing instead of 100%. So it's a huge difference. But even just having these, Amun-Ra's at 5-star are super, super important in Seal Land. For Dark Seal Land, you need an E5 Dark Arthendal. And honestly, you can probably get away with close to just the rest of your heroes being 5-star Amon Ra's with a mixture of energy and damage reduced artifacts. Of course, having one other Amon Ra that's like E5 will help a lot for longevity, but um, that's the big difference is it's only one layer. Everything else is really not a big deal because you still get that rounds of being controlled minus one as well. You're not really in it for any of the other abilities, but also the uh, the 50% effect instead of 100 on healing charm. Um, pretty much the same on 6 star, except when you get to 6 star up to 9 star, still one layer, but it is converted at that point into 100% healing from the damage received. Everything's pretty much here. You get more damage reduced. And of course, this now ticks up from 50% to 75%, and then eventually at 10 star, up to 100 so overall Amon Ra is in my eyes it's hard to say she's the best healer because in reality she's not a pure healer she's a damage mitigator so if, if you're used to playing MMOs or anything like that think of her as the shielder doesn't necessarily heal your team up when they're hurting but protects them from extra damage and of course she can convert that damage into healing as well as far as pure output of healing she falls behind Ormus and Belrain by far but as far as damage mitigation and keeping the team alive, with some CC as well, she is by far one of the best heroes in the game. She is so good that she literally defines the PvP meta. She is good at every stage of the game, every part of the game. You can use her in PvE. You almost need her in PvP. She's amazing as you've seen on our Petrify meme team accounts. Even at 5 star, she does a lot for our team to keep them alive. So... I hope this kind of helped you guys out a little bit understanding more of what Amon Ra does that makes her so powerful and the reason why so many passive damage dot healer or dot damage dealers right now are so strong in PvP is because of this lady right here. I hope this was informative. I hope you guys are enjoying the series. I know I'm loving going over these. Look forward to more later this week. I'll try to at least post maybe one support hero guide a day. Keep it a little fresh for you guys. I'm going to try to work through um, Belrain, Gustin, some other ones like that. Probably even Ormus. Uh, I might touch on him. I'll go over Emily Rosa, the ones you need for Sealand. And hopefully this kind of gives you a, a, an insight and understanding more to the game. The more you understand, the better decisions you can make down the road. So hope you guys enjoy this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.